Y'all know what time it is. Hit it, Gregor! What's up, everybody? And welcome to the first episode of In Real Life Podcast Presents Talk and Smack with Greg and Mike. And I'm one of your hosts, that guy named Mike, a.k.a. Mike Knapp. And to my right, as every good right-hand man should be, the silent bomb to my J, my hetero life mate, the Robin to my Batman. It's another guy named Greg. Mm. Greg. Yeah. And uh, this show is not sponsored by whatever this is. Ghost. Ghost Energy. It's not sponsored by it because we've never tried it before. And we don't know if we like it or not. How, how did so, you? How did you get this? I. You know. Apparently, I bought you the only can that doesn't open. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Cut yourself. There we go. Okay. All right. So here we go. Cheers to our first episode. First episode. First episode. Oh, that's not dude, horribly dude, I, bad. I wanted to hate it. And it's, I know. It's not bad. It's actually pleasant. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. So I got sour watermelon. And I have blue raspberry. Yeah. And they got like Sour Patch Kids on there. But you know what? Sour Patch. I would be disappointed. That's I, not Sour Patch Kids Sour. I don't know if I'd want to drink something with the name kids in it. Yeah, well, no. yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, okay. but anyway, this is not actually our first uh, episode of a podcast. We actually have a podcast on Spotify. Will we actually have one? And then we had one, supposedly, we allegedly never did. We never did. Well, we, we had one, and well, we did or didn't have one, and it was so profane that it was taken off podcasts. But... The silver lining being our mission statement was to have a radio show that was so bad that we could get canceled in the first episode, and we did pretty good. We did pretty good. We did pretty good. Our failure was actually our first success. Yes, absolutely. So that's when we knew we were onto something. <clears throat> yeah. So then we had to like tone it back a little bit, and then we restarted the podcast all over again called Talking Smack with Craig and Mike. And then we did that for a few months and started doing a bunch of episodes and got some followers and some listeners. And then our jobs changed. Yes. So we've been on, what, about a three-month hiatus? Yeah, it's been about three months. About three, three months? Three or four months, yeah. Since the worst bed, best podcast the, known the, to man that the, we never did. The worst best podcast known to man. We never and, did. Um, some of those stories are going to come back and haunt yeah. us again. Because we couldn't actually delete all the episodes we never did. So there might actually not be one episode that you shouldn't look up and find on your own and perhaps... Maybe have a small window into the mind of ill repute and hellscape, which is our <laughs> nicknames for each other's brains. So you'll figure That's it right. out. Yeah. So moving forward, we are advocates of, and this is a safe haven for the differently abled community because we ourselves, Gregor. We are differently abled. Yes. Yes, we are. He indeed has the lack of toes to prove it. I have four toes. Yes. Yeah. And you guys, we are like, well, what about you, Mike? What makes you differently abled? Just look at him. I mean, this this is a dumber Will Sasso. Right. Here you go. Um, I, uh, I'm sorry to inform you, but I think I, I, I put my pants on the slide. Okay. In the McDonald's toys. <laughs> okay. So, so you're welcome for that. So for those of you who listened to the second podcast that we never had. Yes. We would do it from Mike's car when we were at work, not at DSEA. DSEA. Not in Kitsap County, not Washington. In not in Bremerton, Washington. Right. So he has all these like mannerisms and everything that only I got to see. <laughs> but now this is like for the world to see. So frankly, excited about it. some of them are pretty frankly good. I must say, a lot of people say they're bad. A lot of people they're hurting people. Frankly, and uh, I'm just bringing them. And like, we'll bring something else later, folks. Okay, but that's just a small. Small taste of my horribly bad. I was actually going to make you do it in like a yeah, like not a yet. Triple inter, in, in like make them earn it. Okay, make them earn it. Okay, not yeah, yet. You guys have to go not back yet. and listen to some of the podcasts before I really get deep it's into the ongoing it. jokes. It's worth it. And make sure you start with podcast number seven. seven. Number seven. Number seven. That's that's the that's hollowed ground. Yes, that's our legendary episode 
that like 12 people have listened to and 10 of them were us. Yes, exactly. And uh, I still get teary-eyed laughing so hard just listening it's, to myself laugh and tell, you so telling your story. It is so hilarious. It is. It is so, so hilarious. Whatever. I'm Don't sorry. listen to it then. Fine. Just go watch Dancing with the Stars. Especially if you're in New Zealand, we don't want you. Right? <laughs> Which you got to listen to the old one to know what that means. I have a fucking story for episode two about New Zealand. Okay. It's going to be fucking nutty. Okay. But, um, and we should probably not swear that much because now it's YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And then looks... we kind of, if we want to monetize stuff, we got to like not talk about the things we used to talk about, unfortunately. Yeah, because it's all about this, you know? Yeah. Man, the man zeal. And I don't want to, and like the music. The reason we did the da 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 is because I'm afraid that YouTube is going to, like, copyright tag my fucking shit, even though I'm in the that's, song. I'm in the band. That's that Mike's that band. That's Mike's band. I'm a contractually signed musician in a signed band called 627, and I earn royalties off that song, and I will try to find a picture of me playing at the uh, legendary Whiskey A Go-Go in L.A., playing that song in this here somewhere. I'll just boop. Okay, and then, oh, by the way, make sure you do these three things. It's the like, subscribe, and oh, follow. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put graphics on the screen that Greg can't see. I might even cover his face. So but who would want to cover that would probably, that would, uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> No, Mike's like the computer, like, talking picture box guy. And I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the dinosaur, like, sidekick guy. That's why you're my right hand man. That's right. You're the Robin to my Batman. That's right. You're the, my the silent, silent Bob, Bob that to your Jay. Talks a lot. Speaking of cue. Jay, Jay. Oh yeah, dude. Shit, I almost forgot, man. Yeah. Our buddies, Pigskin Blitz and uh, and uh, Lone Star. Go ahead and check them out on YouTube. They have a uh, a YouTube channel. It's now <clears throat> called the Shake and Bake Boys. Shake and Bake Boys. Formerly known as the Poor Boys, they're now the Shake and Bake Boys. Um, I've been a guest on their show multiple times. Go ahead and check them out. Right now, we're doing a lot of uh, fantasy football stuff. So if you guys are into fantasy football, they got Pick'ems, where they pick their winners of the week, and then we talk about fantasy football, we talk about other stuff, and it's a lot of fun. So go ahead and check them out. So just for this week, um, you can call Shake and Bake Cry and Cry, because Jay is a Broncos fan. Yeah. And I did the math. I did the science. If... The Broncos were spotted one point for every minute of the game in the second, third, and fourth quarters. They still would have lost by a touchdown. Yeah. And, and Lone yeah. Star is a Cowboys fan. So, you know, <laughs> I didn't know we were going to start throwing shade this early in the podcast. but um, Well, I, I don't have much to go on. because I actually, when you said you wanted to talk about the Broncos, I, I took some notes. And I was like, I was still like watching some of the highlights. And I was like, you know what? Russell Wilson literally still has the most beautiful deep ball anybody has ever thrown, even when there's nobody there to catch it. There's one where it's like, you're like, oh, look at this pass. This is going to be amazing. There's like nobody for like 12 yards. It was a beautiful spiral. I was like, that is amazing. Where is everybody? But anyway. His grandmother's like, he's handsome. (laughs) So... Holy shit. Seattle Seahawks fan. Yeah. 49 fan. Yeah. There you go. So, you know, it's just like um, that scene in Ghostbusters when Bill Murray comes down and he's like, it's like, cats and dogs getting along. <laughs> it's like, this is literally what cats and dogs getting along looks like. Yeah. No, I'm the dog. No. no. I'm some Huskies fan. Oh, okay. Dog, D-A-W-G. D-A-W-G. Like, you know, oh my God. Okay. G-A-W-B. Oh, okay, that works. Yeah. You can be a purple dog. That's Yes, fine. purple dog. And yeah. you guys cannot, please, I'm telling you right now, our Halloween episode, I already shared a picture of him of what I want my Halloween outfit to be. Rainbow unicorn. And this actually is a fucking Easter egg ongoing joke. You have to listen to the podcasts or you won't get any of these. The rainbow unicorn is such a beautiful thing. Mm. And for, I'm going to toast the rainbow unicorn. We will toast I found. the rainbow unicorn. With our ghost, yes. which is a nice beverage and a mm-hmm. terrible rock band. Not as good. Rocks. Ah! I literally thought I they were ripping off Queen. Flash. Dun, 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 dun. Ah! No, they, did they rip them off? I feel like they kind of did. No, because Queen is good. The same. Well, the, the copycat is not as good. That's what I'm saying. Okay. 
But anyway, moving on with the show, guys. Yes. So, our first segment of our first episode, I'm really, really super happy to bring this episode to you. This is an, uh, an, an honor to our probably one of our three or four mm. longest, most loyal listeners. And that is a gentleman that we like to call Dolan. Dolan. Christopher Dolan. He is a, a work friend. Well, used to be a work friend for you. Still a work friend for me. And he has been there since day one. Yes, he has. He has listened to every single episode, even the the uh, the podcast we allegedly never did. Listen to all those. And, you know, after about halfway through our, our second round about it, we were like, you know what? We need to honor Chris and just do a, a segment all about him. So he, he would actually listen to the podcast the day we recorded it. Yeah. He would listen to it before I did. He's like one of the three people in the first 12 hours that listened to it. Yeah, there was... And like well, Melissa. Dylan and Melissa. And Marie. And Marie, Marie the remote perquisita. Perquisita. We actually we, have... We will... She's on staff. Yeah, we have she's, we she's have our, interns, as yes, it were. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. She's our she's our remote podcast perquisita. person. So, perquisita. if you guys don't know what that means, that's old-timey words for uh, fact checker. Yeah. Because remember, mm-hmm. his name is... Gregory James Hawthorne, and he's our our resident snobby uh, Englishman. Do you know how I got here today? Um, horse and carriage. No, my penny farthing. Your penny farthing? Yeah, of course you did. Because I'm going to have to show a picture of that now, because you're the first person I've ever met in my life that knew what that was off the top of his head. And that might be because I... Maybe, maybe when I was today? older, they came he out He still with has one. Yeah. Yeah. And he rides it with his bowler hat. Well, I'm a, he, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a he drinks his tea with his pinky out because, while well, I'm a tea pr- fancier, prancing, prancing around as a tea fancier. So on his penny farthing. Okay, we are, we are lighting up the board, man. With, I need to find one of those like, old, like AI websites and just like fucking have it create AI images of you doing all those things. That would be amazing. I can't it, afford it. It would, it would actually be really good if it was done poorly, like my like, yeah. face, you know. I can't remember if it's like Mid Journey. It's one of those companies right now. Like everybody that was using the AI art from that, like like the I guess there's like a lot of lawsuits going on. So everybody that was really monetizing their really? art is like, oh, stop! Because well, there's like there's like writers now that are that are like suing AI or whatever because they're taking their stories and changing them a little and then mm-hmm. yeah. So well, I have I follow another uh, YouTuber, Colton Dusty. Shout out to Dusty Smith, Colton Dusty. Um, he did a whole graphic novel really? and used like these AI images as his image. And now he can't finish it because all these fucking lawsuits mm-hmm. and some of these people like prepaid. And he's like, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to finish it. I, and I didn't just steal your money. Like I just want to get it out to you, but these fucking dickheads, you know, I'm like, yeah, that fucking sucks, man. And he had such a great idea too. So but anyway, I hope everything works out. Cult to dusty. <laughs> So, getting back to the first segment, what would Dolan do? What would Dolan do? We had a segment called Guess That Scenario. And what I would do is I would find new stories from around the world, mostly India and Texas and Florida. Right. Which Florida is smack dab in the middle of India. (laughs) Near the confluence of the Rio Grande and the Amazon and... Lots of other rivers that you go uphill right to now. the Baltic. I'm gonna have to remember all this. We're gonna have to yeah. bring it back. Yeah, we're gonna have to like rebuild the insanity. We are. We are. We are. Of okay. Our our made up map in our brains. And again, God, I wish it. I need Mid Journey to create a fake map for us. The graphic back here behind us would be amazing. So, with, <laughs> I would find these crazy stories, and then I would use my wonderful brain, Hellscape, Hellscape, uh, to create different alternative outcomes of what this story could possibly be and then he has to guess real or hellscape right. which also became another segment because i would okay. just full-on make stuff up because mm-hmm. greg was like holy crap you're starting to get good at this and i'm like don't feed the bear bacon because now he's gonna want bacon all the time so then it just became a thing and then what would dolan do was born and without any further ado i called up dolan told him hey we're gonna do our first youtube episode of the podcast and he's like sweet and i'm like First episode's going to have What Would Dolan Do? And he's like, nice. So I approached him. I'm like, okay. So, dude, so I texted him the other day. He had this idea. Like, um, I was scrolling through the channels the other day and saw the movie Indecent Proposal. And I was like, oh, shit. Here we go. I got my idea. So I I'm am- thinking, like, 
a billionaire or a millionaire, right? Like per, they come up to Christopher Dolan and they're like oh, so oh, bored. Oh, stop right there. I want to. I want to just <laughs> bask in this moment. If you if you take Christopher Dolan and indecent proposal, that makes me so moist. I'm ready to go. All right, moving, pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. pivoting. Um, <laughs> so don't let the first those, don't yeah. let the first podcast creep back in. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll be talking about that's why I call mud him. crabs and. The Carquinas Bridge and yeah, oh, no, we don't want and, to do um, that. No, yeah, so that's literally why I named his brain the mind of ill repute. Yes. So, this indecent proposal, I'm like, so you're approached, someone offers you ten million dollars, okay, but you got to do one of three things, okay, okay. Now, by the way, I have no idea what he's doing. We, so much of this is not prepared. Yeah, we do not probably, share stuff. That's the beauty of how this works. Probably clean that. Yes. Yeah. So, he has proposed. And remember, this is just for kind of like the sick enjoyment for yeah. millionaires and business. Because they go to skiing. In a, they go skiing in Aspen. They go <clears> you know, hang gliding and fucking wherever. And so they, they do all the cool vacations. They swim with the sharks. Nothing is like cool to them anymore, right? Squid games. So it's like... Squid games yeah, is all like rich people. Exactly, right? So... This is kind of like, I'm bored. I'm going to pick a random person, see what they're willing to do for 10 million bucks. Okay. And they picked Dolan. Exactly. Because in my mind, that's exactly what would happen in reality. Because this is the in real life podcast. We're not NPCs. Shut up. This is not a, simula a simulation. Maybe, okay. Kind of. Okay. Right. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> option A. He has to go to a tattoo shop with Gregory Hawthorne and get I Love Greg tattooed on his butt. Which should happen anyway. It, it every, should, everybody. This shouldn't be $10 million. This should be yes. like 100 bucks. And if he actually gets I Love Gregory Hawthorne, it should be $10.5 million. Okay. Just for the Hawthorne. Okay. So it's super specific. He should get paid more. Okay. B. Record a random viral video with Greg of him. I like where this is going. Yeah. With him. Spanking him on all fours in his tidy whities yelling out, hold up, thank you, sir, may I please have another mimicking Kevin Bacon from the movie Animal House. Who's spanking who in this scenario? It You're, doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. You're spanking Dolan. Everybody wins. There's no Dolan one. is the one mimicking Kevin Bacon. There's no victims in this scenario. Okay. Everyone wins. Yes. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. And so, I'm spank so I'm spanking him. <laughs> yes. So I'm Niedermeyer. Yes. I'm Niedermeyer exactly. spanking... Kevin if Bacon. you guys are too young to know these references, go watch the movie. Yeah, it's it's They're one classics. of the top ten in the world yes. anyway, uh, history. And then C, last but not least, he has to nakedly embrace Danny DeVito in an awkward fashion for ten minutes, making it one minute per million dollars. So I propose to you, Gregor, what would Dolan do? Okay, we can also play this game... What does Greg want Dolan to do? <laughs> That's a whole other podcast. Oh, okay. Whole other podcast! <clears throat> Don't know if the world is ready for that. Okay. It's not going to be A. It's not going to be the tattoo. Because it's just... How do you know? Um, it's not the, weird enough? No, it's it's not weird enough. It's... it's. Uh, so you're canceling it out? I'm canceling it out. Yes! You're right. That's not it. Oh, God. I, I, I thought you like. I almost pulled the, the Jedi mind trick. To the end of Yeah. Round. So now it's down to do I get to spank Dolan it, Animal House style, mm -hmm. or does he awkwardly hug Danny DeVito naked? I'm going to say, because I know <laughs> that Dolan has this weird thing about Danny DeVito, I'm going to say. He wants to hug Danny DeVito naked. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not happy. No, you got it right. No, but oh, I'm not because happy you with wanted Dolan. it to be... His, Dolan. Oh, you Chris, wanted him to get Dolan, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed at you now. I'm elated because actually... In one of the other episodes we did on our <laughs> podcast, there was also a Danny DeVito-related answer, yeah. and he picked that one, and I thought that was going to make it so easy for you, because, and then I was like talking about him, I was talking to him about it at work, and I'm like, you know what? There's a new mission statement for this podcast. We have a side mission. Our mission, other than just making this more popular and getting more listeners, 
or viewers and followers or whatever, is we know we've reached the level of success when we get our first selfie of Dolan with Danny DeVito. Okay. Because Danny DeVito it's... accidentally saw one of these videos and was like, who's this Christopher Dolan guy? And I will show his picture so Danny DeVito will know how to find him. And it will happen. It will happen. You're welcome, Danny. We're going to will it into existence. That's right. That was <laughs> no, you're welcome, Christopher Dolan. Well, again, there's no losers. Because I hope in the picture they're embracing each other awkwardly. They... That will make the picture... So worth okay, it. Okay, so my, my thought is, if you're naked mm -hmm. and embracing Danny DeVito, there's nothing awkward about that. I mean, it's just so natural. It is. So but you better have your saltpeter. Just saying. You better have your saltpeter handy. What is that? <laughs> I told you. Just look it up. Murray! Get Murray, on it. Murray, get on it. <laughs> you guys will find out in episode two. If you don't already know, just let everybody else know in the, in the comments. And if you guys want to participate in the show comment because we're going to do a whole conspiracy corner thing and I have a like a tinfoil hat segment too that if you guys have shit you want to like contribute to that we will definitely do our due diligence there goes a and, uh, man. yeah yeah mm, he's just he recognized that you identified thanks for that can't escape that shit ever nice well middle, at least we don't have that that middle of the method. fucking show at least we don't have that meth head riding around on his bike or, or a, a bird, like, attacking my car. God, I wish we had that on video. Oh, God. Oh, my so lord. so fucking weird. <laughs> so, like, probably five, six episodes ago, a few months back. Yeah. Like, we're doing an episode, and we look over, and there's this bird, a male bird, attacking himself in Greg's, like, the, the, the passenger, passenger side, side, like, side mirror. Side mirror. And, like, the girl bird is sitting on top of the mirror, like, egging him on. Like, yeah, get him, honey. Kick his butt. Kick his ass. He's like, I'm still bad, babe. Every time I punch him, he punches me. I don't know what's happening. He's like, and this is why human beings rule the world. That's right. Because we're not that stupid. No, I take that back. I did see a TikTok the other day of an old white guy so drunk that he picked a fight with himself in the mirror. And every time he tried to move, he went, bam. He's like, oh. It was almost like. He, he anticipated my every move. Is it because it's you, it's, dumbass? It's like, it's like the kitten in front of the mirror. Yeah, you guys have looked at that video. Did so literally the people at the bar are like filming it. And they're just like, because they can see him doing it. And they're like filming, like, oh my fucking god, this dude's so drunk. He's fighting with himself and has no idea. It's great. It's amazing. I love the internet. That's what the internet is for. It is. And that and look up. Mind of ill repute. So I've heard. All right. So yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I come prepared! I come prepared. Alright, so our next segment is uh, News I Wish I Never Knew. Oh my god. Alright, you're going to love this shit. Now, do you guys, Gregor, have you heard of the world's most important blue backpack? Time to look the, it up! The, look that shit up. The, most, the world's most important blue backpack. backpack. The world's most important blue backpack. Now, this story begins with the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman. So look up Sam Altman. Sam Altman. Sam Altman. And then go to images. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, who is the company that is responsible for um, chat CP or GPT, right? That's the website that everybody... See the image right there? Yeah. I'm going to put that on the screen. And like that one too. I'll put those images up on the screen. So... He has been seen in public okay. with this blue backpack so often it became a thing. And people on the internet started, they're like, dude, what's up with this blue backpack? What's up with this blue backpack? And then it got leaked out. This backpack, so he carries this backpack around. It basically has like a laptop or laptops in it. I was going to say 500 Barbie doll heads. <laughs> God, I hope that would be the case. That would be way better than what's actually in it. What's in am, this backpack... Am I, I going to get mad? Maybe. Okay. Um, so in this blue backpack is either a laptop or laptops that is like a nuclear kill switch. Safe, like fail safe. In case chat GPT decides to like go rogue. Like if it has like, uh, what do you call that? Like a singularity where it, like it, it like has self-awareness. You mean like Skynet and Terminator? Literally. 
Literally, dude. He became self-aware and all the bombs. So went this off. supposedly, he can self-detonate every fucking server at every location at at Open AI to basically save the fucking world from fucking AI takeover. <clears throat> How did this get out? The, all the fucking pictures. No, but it's like why. How- how did how did they find out what's in the blue backpack? People asking on the internet, people asking like, "What the fuck is up with this?" And then basically, we're like, "Well, we should probably tell people what it is." And I so was he's like, just walking around with this switch. I mean, yeah. Why why can't someone like mug him and that exactly exactly? This, this, there is no security. <laughs> look, look 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 at the yeah. picture of this. We spend billions. Here. We spend billions of dollars on national security. We have aircraft carriers, and this dude is just walking around with a blue backpack that's like between us and fucking Terminator. Okay, uh, the mind of uh, ill repute wants to weigh in on this picture that we're showing. Okay. No way are his feet that big. He's wearing giant shoes. Oh my god. So he can go, yeah, ladies, that's right. Because <laughs> you know what they say about guys with big feet. Big shoes. Expensive shoes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I know, I know what that's like. And horribly average... Penis what, size. What? What? I was gonna say <laughs> if if shoe size has anything, anatomically correct, right. or proportionately. If shoe size has anything to do with it, I'm screwed because based on the foot. Wow. One size. You'd be lopsided. Is, is one size is a size <laughs> ten and a half. Yeah. And the other size, and I know this because I used one of those like old timey like put your heel against the back metal thing. It's a oh, zero. The foot measurer. The foot yeah. measurer yeah. thing. It was a contraption. <laughs> It was a so, I have a ten and a half and a zero. You would look like Gonzo's nose if he was laying on his side. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hellscape. Yeah. But yeah, okay, so this also begs the question though. Is there a backup blue backpack? Please tell me there's a backup blue backpack. Like you said, what if he gets fucking mugged? Right? You know what I'm saying? Oh, and and he's like, wearing like matching shoes in this one. Oh yeah, because you know when you're a fucking millionaire and you have a backpack that can save the world, you got to accessorize. That's just that's just science. I hate that. Just guy. makes sense. I I, I hate this guy. <laughs> or Sand. not? Or maybe. So yeah. So if um, if you ever see a picture of a uh, Steve Altman with uh, this blue backpack. It's literally between you and robots fucking murdering everyone you're, that you know. He he looks like someone's little brother that got his butt kicked in high school. He really you know does. what we're doing? We're living in the time where the guys from Revenge of the Nerds all graduated and created giant dot com companies, and now they're running the world. Yeah, and Bezos, the guys, Elon and, Musk, Steve Altman. It's all Revenge of the Nerds, dude, on crack. And the guys that were really good at sports and kind of popular in high school are doing what now? Sitting in an apartment doing a video cast? I was not that guy. What, what were, no, you were like the I was the guy that stopped being a fucking jock and started playing rock and roll. Oh. I was a rock and roll guy. Okay. That could still add a sick jump shot. Yeah. Did you ever get, I was that guy. <laughs> still kind of do if I can jump. Well, I can't you, jump as high. You're, you're probably like Jack Sigma that had like a, a, verti- Sigma. a vertical of like half an inch. I'm so glad you said Jack Sigma because he was actually was one of my favorite Sonics as a little kid because that's when the Sonics were really good. Yeah. I have a Jack Sigma jersey. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I have two ba- basketball jerseys. I have How Sigma. Big is it? It's, it's Would a, it fit it's Jack a, Sigma? It's a dress. It's you know, a dress. You know, because I lost 200 pounds. So. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Congratulations, bro. Yeah, thank you. Don't leave me. All right. Um, my other my other uh, jersey is a Chris Mullen jersey. Chris Mullen. I liked Chris Mullen. Yeah, I loved basketball back then, man. So Chris Mullen was a raging alcoholic. So I, you know, kind of. <laughs> I had common ground there. Yeah, common All ground. Right. I'm coming. I was up. actually going to get like the most disgusting IPA beer I could think of drinking, but I was like, nah, that's, that's bad form for our first episode. So yeah. But anyway, moving <laughs> on. Our next segment is also another oldie but goodie. Get that search ready, buddy, because this is going to be a good one. Um, <laughs> it's one of our second favorite episodes. Actually, it's our first favorite episode. And it's, it happened in India. Oh, India. And actually, I'm going to change that. It happened in India? It happened in India. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't actually happen in India. Oh, that's what he just passed. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
India is the fourth country on Earth to make it to the moon. Look that shit up, dude. Like what? images of India landing on the moon. This is okay. So this is my tinfoil hat edition of it happened in India. So I watched this shit because I was like, wait, what? Wait, you okay? We have to extrapolate for a second because we've done so many of these fucking it happened in India segments. You mean the country that has bus jack and uh, like monkeys? Yeah, there. I'm gonna show a picture. There's literally a guy that trained his monkey to drive his bus, and but there's another story where the, this guy is cleaning his bus, and he's in the back cleaning the bus, and a fucking monkey jumps in the bus and somehow puts it in drive and starts driving the bus, and he's like bouncing off cars and shit. And the guy's like, ah, and I'm like, so that country, the country where that happened, they're the fourth country on earth to land on the moon. I call bullshit. So, and this is why. So. Did you look up images? <laughs> no, I looked this is up. So fucking stupid. <laughs> Hold on. Try to find a video or images, dude. Holy shit! Go to images. I I, I googled India moon landing. Three words that I never thought I could. <laughs> right. <have said. laughs> so okay, look at that shit. That's what you saw. That's what you saw on TV. I'm gonna put the picture up there. What is that? That is the stupidest looking cartoon. Wait, like that... video game spaceship thing I've ever seen. It's not even real, dude. Is that a that is a graphic image? Because they're like, this is what it would look like if you were outside of our spaceship watching it land. I'm like, so we're watching. Wait a minute. So your moon landing is like fake video of your landing? You know what that reminds me of? <laughs> what? It's the time that like North Korea used <clears throat> the jet fighter blowing up from Top Gun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna show that too if I can find it. That's. Okay, so then basically, this is the only other video and pictures that you see. So this one, is that it? That's it's a solar panel with like something covered up with like gold foil, and then you can actually see the moon. All right, so is that a Seven Eleven sponsorship? <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking something, dude. Like, okay, so this picture is the actual legit video of them landing on the moon. Okay, not the, the graphic thing. The graphic thing, I was like, what the fuck is look that at, and why would you do that? Oh my god, look at this. It's, they've got a rover? No, that's all fake. Oh, that's fake. That's fake AI shit. You cannot find actually any pictures other than these videos. Or pictures. That's it. So the dude that walked out and went on the moon, so he'd be interviewed after the fact. I'm like, man, he made it back really fast. It's amazing. You know, so, if, this, if this was Japan... It would have like eight million pictures. Here's my deal. And I about can this. say that <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a I'm a quarter Asian. That was good. You we will get into that. Yeah, you were gonna time. have to because I do. Don't get canceled the first episode. Dude. <laughs> say fuck. Don't go that. So are we still family adjacent or are we family now? So we still have to be family. Not adjacent. on YouTube. No. You know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna have to mark all these videos not for children and then just hope that they all steal your mom's iPads anyway. But anyway, okay, so this picture, all right? Here's my thing about this picture, or you, the, the whole video. It actually shows them landing, right? It goes, like, really far, and then it's, like, closer and closer. Now, we live in a world where... In a world. In a world. Oh, this is a video. Where, yeah, it's just a fucking fake video of them landing a fake fucking spaceship on the fake fucking... Sur it's a fucking video game, dude. This, this looks what I'm like... Saying. This looks like a really smart seventh grader put that together. Yeah. But here's my thing. We, we live in a world where fucking movie producers are recording entire movies with their fucking iPhones. Yeah. And this shit looks legit. Yeah. Why? Oh, God, why? Can somebody explain to me why we're not putting fucking 15 fucking iPhones on spaceships? You know what I'm saying? Because India. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes fucking sense. They're like, no, we have this old fucking flip phone razor. We're going to duct tape it on the side of our fucking... We're at the worst angle ever in the history of bad angles. This, this is like the world's longest, like, selfie stick. <laughs> Dude, I'm just like, what fucking camera are they using? And who decided on the angle? You know what we need to do to make history? We need to see the side of a solar panel and some equipment covered up with gold foil. And then we can see a sliver of the moon. The fuck, man? How is that even real? But again, I digress... So bus driving monkeys and so so bus driving. Let's 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 put do a synopsis of India. Bus driving monkeys. Check. 
They don't eat cows. Check. Check. The man with the world's largest penis. Longest penis. Check. That, Did that, we do that what? in another podcast? No. It's like 34 inches long. <laughs> what? How? Whoa. I'm now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, you know what? That's probably a, a, a story that we didn't get to because I, I know I did a whole thing on that. Not that I was interested. Or yeah, somebody had, just had to do their due diligence on that one. No, the guy... Was, he did it. He was up on the like, Adderall and fucking Red Bull all night. Oh, just fucking okay. pulling an all-nighter on that shit. <clears throat> we're going to say that one. Yeah, we are. We're, we're going to put a pin back in that one, well, as yes. it were. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheech Marin Thank totally you, Cheech. agrees with you. Thank he you, totally Cheech. agrees. Thank yes. you, Cheech. And that's our buddy Cheech Marin. Vich. He's he's a buddy of ours. Okay. This is terrible. This is so bad. Wait a minute. We've got people taking pictures of a fake. <laughs> I gotta show that picture too. We've got we've got people we've got people <laughs> holding up their kids. It looks like they're in like the Control center. Yeah, they're like, look at this fake graphic that our video game company came up with. Atari that's, sent us I was just going to say, that's like, <laughs> that's like taking a picture of Air Sea Battle in, in Atari and like, that's a tank. That's a tank shooting down an airplane. Dude, the graphics are slightly above Star Fox. I'm saying it's like Star Fox fucking Game Boy Edition, dude. That's what this shit is. I'm just, wow. Okay. Yeah. Just, just... Fucking phenomenal. So that's our segment on India. Thank you, India. The Thank gift. you, India. The, <laughs> India, is the, India is one of those places that just keeps giving. Keeps giving. So I do have another story. Um, this one is also news I wish I never knew. So, University of Tennessee. The Vols. Yeah. The Volunteers. They have one of the leading uh, forensic criminal forensic programs in the nation. And there is like this forest adjacent to the university. Okay. And there apparently is a story of a person who was like, I guess they're like visiting somebody at the college or visiting nearby. Okay. And they're just walking through the woods. I'm going to go for, go for walking the woods. And they stumble on these like weird, like plexiglass boxes with like fucking holes in them. Like almost like plexiglass like cages. Kind of like a like a like a prison cage, kind and of. there's like nude, dead, rotting corpses in them. And he's like, "What the fuck?" He like walk around. And he finds more, and he finds another one. This hold and on. He's like, "Holy shit!" So he comes out and he's like, "There's fucking dead bodies in cages out in the woods." This this is like within walking distance of the university. Of the university. So apparently he's like, "Yeah, I fe- I fucking stumbled onto some crazy shit." I gotta tell people, and then the university is like, "Actually, this is a part of our forensics program." So the students, they have to go out and they have to like basically monitor the rotting process of human beings. They're like, how do you think we figure this shit out? We don't just go out and like study dead raccoons and possums and shit. We got to know what we're dealing with. So I was like, whoa, dude. So Wait a minute. So that's what you what happens when you sell your body to science? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. That's exactly what I was going to say. I was like, Wait, what? So my, my grandma could be rotting in a box out in fucking Tennessee somewhere? What the fuck, dude? Oh, uh, little something I'd like to say. Hell Here, no. Here's here's an obscure reference. That's when Jeff Spicoli goes, righteous bucks. <laughs> dude, this is fucking so weird, man. Holy shit. Yeah, you Wait, can't even they, make that so shit up, so dude. There, But there's like no science. Like, this guy just comes across... Apparently, these, if you're walking boxes. from the school direction, there probably is. I don't know what direction this person came from. I'm dude, like, is there trails? Dude, I'd like... Did he just, like, run? He's just, I'm just going well. I got my machete. I got questions, man. I probably would have, could have found all that shit out, but I, just, I read, like, one article and was like, holy shit, I, I got to write this down. I would sit and eat my lunch there. Yeah, you know how much, like, research I do on some of these? I go to Snopes just to see if they're not fake. And I'm like, okay, or... I make sure they have an ending. Because we've both done stories where it was like, and then they found a dead old lady in the house. The end. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? How did, The dead old lady didn't even live in the house. How did she get there? We don't know. What was what was called? You'll what? figure it out. Just watch the old episode. Or listen to the old episode. I was just going to make, it, yeah. gonna make a reference to the old, old one that we've never, we oh, really yeah. never did. Never actually. About things getting caught in... 
Moving on. I still have PTSD for that. Mo- moving on. Moving on. Moving like your your bowels have in the past. Mm-hmm. The same. Yeah. Next episode, there's going to be one of my favorite ep- my favorite segments, and that's going to be <clears throat> story time with Gregor. And Captain Greg's story awesome. hour. Old old timey story hour. Yeah. So you guys get- definitely want to listen to these stories right before dinner time. Right. <laughs> During dinner. During dinner. Dude, this this is much watch. Mu- this is must, must talk. Watch. Must this talk is must TV. watch must TV. TV. Yes. What, what TV but getting back to YouTube? how we we don't have to do any research because we can just lay out whatever the hell we want because we've got our crack staff. Oh, Marie, Marie will get on it. Re- yeah. Mar- Marie, the remote because per- oh. she knows how differently able we can be. Oh, by the way, yeah, I, I talked to Marie about. Um, her, the picture that we're going to use of mm-hmm. her—it it's a tie back to an old episode. It's nice. Be awesome. Are we using the the tiara one? No, no, no. We're going to use the tiara. Okay. It's going to be a different one. Well, then I won't put that one on the screen. Now. Okay. Well, we can use the tiara <laughs> one, but then there's going to be another one that's going to be like a blast from the past. She's I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it has nothing to do <clears throat> with a toy rifle taped to your leg. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. I I kind of know where that story's going. Yeah, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with wearing white pants to work the next day. After. Oh, that's my favorite. That's my, my second favorite. The chocolate waterfall is my favorite. Okay, so we have to start with chocolate so, waterfall. And then you got to send me the picture so I can literally put the picture up. Okay, and everybody will have the visual. The, the chocolate waterfall story will be revisited yes. on the next episode, and then I will critique. The I won't no spoilers. I will t- we'll, okay. we'll critique the picture after the story's told. And if if you're thinking if you don't know the story, and you're thinking what might the chocolate waterfall be, and if you go to the grossest thing you can think of, my answer is you're right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just fucking heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. Yeah, so it's, it's not good. Have you heard of this one? What one there, would that be? <laughs> I'm getting to it. Smart ass. All right, so apparently, I saw the other day. Uh, there's a TikToker, and he has an entire TikTok channel, and this dude's got a lot of videos. What does that mean, chat? Like a TikTok? I don't know channel. anything about TikTok. I know that my daughter gets all yeah. the news from TikTok. Oh, so she's well informed. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, and as a matter of fact, only the best me, information. It reminds me of a segment I'd like to do later on that we're not going to talk about now. Okay, I know because I am an influencer on TikTok with almost forty thousand followers, and I know my fucking information one hundred percent accurate one hundred percent of the time. Don't you have like a TikTok, Spotify, talking picture box something about? Did you get like a million hits or something? No, I got one that was like almost a million views. Yeah, that's it. And it was just me making fun of fucking the voting shit back in the, when the COVID first started. And everybody's like, oh my God. Voting, was there a problem with voting? I don't know. People seem to think that there was a lot of issues with it or something. If I want to get mad about voting, it makes me want to do the angriest, worst pull-up in history. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. I want to like test the durability of my fucking power tower. Okay. All right. We're we're gonna, we're starting to get off and on tangents again. That's okay cuz as we're talking about it, I'll try to find a video of that and put it in the background so everybody knows what we're talking about. World's worst pull-ups ever in the history of man. So angriest, anyway, the angriest one. This TikTok kid or young gentleman, you don't actually see him most of the time. Well, he heard about something. So he looked he started driving around to these places and was like Holy shit, this is, shit's real. And there's nothing on the news about it. Like, nobody's covering any of this shit. So apparently all over Illinois and around the surrounding Chicago areas, all of these super posh, like, multi-million dollar fucking home neighborhood, like, gated communities and yeah. shit, are all fucking, like, they're ghost towns. Like, okay. all the fucking residents have all moved out overnight. A lot of these mansions, their fucking furniture is there, dude. There's fucking shit still in the pool. And their fucking cars are gone, clothes are gone, everything. Fucking house is bought out. Nothing. Dude's like, what the fuck is going on? Did we miss the rapture? So here's the deal, right? He starts looking into it. And Amazon and Jeff Bezos are literally displacing 
hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millionaires in Illinois to build the biggest Amazon hubs in the United States. So this is how insane we've gotten. We've gotten to a point to where we have a billionaire throwing millionaires out of their fucking mansions because he wants to build a bigger warehouse. Why? So and Why? part of me, I'm like, so A, this is disturbing because no news companies are talking about it at all. No, there's no news about it at all, except for these people that are out there researching it and putting it on social media. And part of me is also like, good. Why? Good. How does it feel? Why Why can't he just... Just slightly a little bit, buy, maybe jaded. <laughs> why can't he buy like some shitty state like Kansas? Just buy the whole state. It has to be for a strategic shipping purpose. Yeah, think because Chicago has had some of the biggest shipping companies in well, the United States. If you think about it, it's, it's pretty centralized. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're thinking about it strategically, if you want to be the biggest logistics company in the world... That's a that's a good starting point to have a lot of your shit go. And you you, you know what the neighbors to the north say? He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Now get the hell out of my hoose. Yeah. I'll have to toast it. By the way, Canada, we love you. Hit the, to, hit the like and subscribe, Canada. Hit the like and subscribe. And that one person in New Zealand, please find us on YouTube. I hope I think it's one person. We Yeah. We had one person we we looked at our like Thing that shows where people are listening from. Our analytics. Or, yeah, that, yeah that, that, those things. We know words. Yeah. Okay. He knows more words. We, than we, we know but, words and yeah. such. And we had. I took one my alpha person, brain today. We 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 had I sponsor. Did. We no. we had one listener in New Zealand, and when we found that off, we did a New Zealand segment, like eight straight episodes, and that person never listened again. Yeah, it was weird. And you know what? We actually found out like if New Zealand was like. The whitest white bread made into toast with like unsalted, unsweetened I, butter. Yeah. Served with like the unflavored almond milk. They are the, the most milk toast bland country on fucking earth. If dude. New Zealand was a guy, his name would be Blaine. Literally. If New Zealand. Okay. Okay, here we go. If you took a white girl named Jill and fed her flavorless yogurt, that is the equivalent of what New Zealand would be as a person. Or a situation. In a plain white room. Like, we started looking up the top ten names, and it was like, Noel. Yeah. April. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Clarence. Is, like, New Zealand, like, a giant Stepford Wives, like, thing? Just, like, a whole country, and they're all just, like, white robots wearing their khakis and dockers and shit. It's like, do they wear dockers in New Zealand? I don't know. They call them dackers? Dackers? Hey, you got any dackers? Hey, April. You got any dick? I don't know. I'm starting to sound like I'm from New York. Uh, my We're, accents what, are horrible. What, what's the joke? Why is it my accents are good on on when nobody can see me, but now they're bad now? I think it's time for a for a, 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 a um, impression challenge. <laughs> oh fuck, <clears throat> Marie! Okay. No, somebody else gets a comment, and I'll do it next time. It has to be it has to be viewer driven. Okay, because right? Marie. Posse. She, no, okay, it takes no. one. It takes one. No one. Uh, Say, no. Anyway, you are you are to eat. Back to New Zealand. <laughs> Gregor, have you heard about this one? It depends. Okay, shit. <laughs> so, let me, let me find my notes. By the way, <laughs> this show is almost always. When I say almost, it, it is always funnier to me and my than yeah. to anybody else. That's why I laugh the hardest when we listen to episode seven. Episode episode seven. seven. You better go listen to it. Episode and this 10. is in real life. We are not NPC. Zzz. We didn't... We don't glitch. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, have you heard about this one? Oh, Holy shit. I've almost so, heard about it. <laughs> I'm listening to the Sean Ryan podcast the other day. I work driving for the Zon. For the Zon. And I'm delivering smiles. I'm delivering smiles. No road there. rage at all. Never. None. I've never secretly thought bad things about... Little old ladies crossing the street, I, we and might then have... I like wake up like one of those weird fucked up scenes in a movie where it's like that can't be happening. Like no, nah, it's just the mind right. hellscape. Right. Mind. We might have to. There's another story in Minecraft. Yeah. To tell. But anyway, and all that was done in Minecraft. In Minecraft. Yes, in Minecraft. I've told story. Um, in Minecraft. So I'm watching the Sean Ryan show, 
And if you don't know who Sean Ryan is, I do not. He's like an ex. I think he's like an ex Navy SEAL. But he now he does a podcast. So he's a badass. He's a badass. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's got this um, ex employee from Antarctica. Have you heard about this whistleblower dude that came out? It was that's, crazy. That's I listened to the whole podcast. I went through all the descriptions and shit. His name is not said not one fucking time. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I, He's like I, all over the damn place. And I don't know his fucking name. I sent you an idea today about a conspiracy theory based in Antarctica. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. That's oh. what I'm getting to. It's like, hey, so this dude claims that he was hired originally by these research companies down there. And that countries have research fucking facilities down there. Oh. And there's only... The biggest one is not ran by a country. Only it's, it's not a country. The Rockefeller Foundation. Shocker. Yeah. The Rockefellers are somehow involved in this shit. Hmm. Didn't feel that <clears throat> time. So, he went from being the plumber to basically like running all the maintenance for the whole facilities. For all the, the, he literally said, I had every key to every door at one point when I worked there. So he had access to everything. So he starts describing what the technology is that they're building. He says it's basically the largest fucking telescope in the world. And they're actually, it's actually in the ice. What this telescope is designed to do is locate neutrinos. I don't know what a neutrino is. I kind of like when like got like a layman's explanation and a neutrino has something to do with uh, when an atom is like bombarded with some energy or some shit, and like there's a flash of blue light, so that tells them the, the neutrino, like they know that there was a neutrino there, right? It tells them whatever. And they're like, well, okay, well, why is that important? And he says, and this is not verbatim, that basically it's like a traffic control tower at an airport. Okay. They're able to track. Neutrinos wherever they go on Earth, in Earth, or in our atmosphere. And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And he's like, possibly vehicles of an undisclosed kind. Well, I didn't see him go into details, and I was like, oh, he's fucking talking so about like, UFOs. UFOs, yeah. It's like, so this telescope is literally designed to track, to UFOs, track UFOs. Because apparently their propulsion systems right leave off these like neutrinos like as a like a, a trace element or some whatever right and so they can literally track if they can find the neutrinos they can pat mm. they can track the path even if the the craft is not visible okay so i would think that they would be building this in antarctica <clears throat> because there is like zero pollution zero light pollution and a hell like, of a lot of ice and a lot of ice because that's yeah, important. apparently it's like basketball sized things are like down in the ice that are all connected. And that's how they make like the giant telescope oh, thing. Oh, okay. But here's a crazy deal, right? He claims that they can literally aim this telescope anywhere on Earth through the Earth. So if they want to track something above Alaska... They're not bouncing it around the outside. They're just going through the core of the Earth and then like, boop, oh, there it is. And I'm like, whoa, wait, that's, wait. That's absolutely terrifying. So when he goes, here's the craziest thing. They figured out how to weaponize it. Of course they did. And he goes, the first time they turned this on, they accidentally, um, basically, it was pointed at, he claimed, allegedly. It was pointed at Jerry. It, it was pointed at Jerry. Christ Church, New Zealand. So they turned this thing on the same day that Christ Church, New Zealand had that huge earthquake. I need to drink to that. So he's literally, I don't know why we're, we're toasting a direct yeah. energy weapon, but he's basically saying this telescope not only can track aircraft or whatever these things are flying around, but it also can be used as a direct energy weapon to do whatever they want, to whomever they want, wherever they want. And now, this came out right after all the so Maui the, shit the, in the Hawaii. Ro the, Rock the Rockefeller Foundation owns mm -hmm. this? Or they're probably, one of the, they're probably funding most of the shit that's going on there. Allegedly in Minecraft. What did the guy I just say? don't want my break lines to be cut tonight. What, what, did, what did Mike Myers say in the So I Married an Ex-Murderer when he was talking like his, his dad, like the old Scottish guy? It was the Rockefellers, the Colonel before he went tits up. <laughs> <laughs> I like the the, the ones that like, time. you know, they control the world. 
Yeah, it's been like 25 years so, since so, I've seen that okay, movie. Okay, so... It's the Illuminati! Keep, keep going on the Hawaiian thing. So... Because... That's have, the thing. Is that they claim that. that this is... This direct energy weapon was something that they were like, hey, can we use it to cause fires and not just earthquakes? I don't know, but that's the, that's the tinfoil hat shit. Okay. We're not saying... And A, we're not saying we believe in all these... We're just bringing them to you right. in case you haven't heard how fucked up this shit is. Mm. And you can look it up on your own. And then maybe if you find out that we're full of shit, you can go into the comments and be like, hey, you're full of shit. And then we'll read the comments later on in another episode and be like, hey, apparently we were full of shit. And we make fun of stupid people. And All we can time. because we're different. Diff, because we're definitely a bolt. Case in point. Case in point. Um, so I want, I want to talk about the Hawaii thing for, mm-hmm. for a minute. Because I heard... That the fire was an inside job. That there's a laser on Hawaii or on Maui that is weaponized and they can do stuff like that. And one thing that they said was that the fire burned wrong. Yeah. So. So this is we haven't <clears throat> talked we haven't talked about this like no nope. this is this is playing into I literally like was a gonna, larger yeah. scheme. If this is the first and only podcast we do... So you know everything we were talking about was 100% correct. Right. It was all right. And <clears throat> we're sorry we made you complicit in whatever we're doing. And also... <laughs> not we're, sorry. We're, we're sorry, not sorry. And we're also sorry that you <clears throat> couldn't hear the Chocolate Waterfall story. So, in, well, okay. So, the Hawaii thing, I, I was actually going to do that in another episode, but since we're already hitting on it... Sure. There's a whole other fucking conspiracy about the lasers... And I was literally talking to Dolan about this at work. Laser. Or Dolan laser and beam. Rob and some of the other people at work. So I'm like, um, and Preston. Yeah, laser. So. Do we want to save it for the next episode? or No, because we're already, we're let's, already let's down go. this road. We're, we're already going. went down the yellow brick road on this one. So. Apparently. <clears throat> and I'll try to find the video because I did a TikTok. Even if I have to record my own TikTok and maybe put a little picture of it up here. Just the guy that's painting his roof and shit. So. Wouldn't it be funny if... You know, I'm going to have to strategically place everything I put to wherever the fuck you're pointing back there. <laughs> Even if it's covering my face, which probably is a good idea. They'd much rather see your reaction to Raquel my Raquel Welch, right there. Great. <laughs> now do I pick, like, the caveman Raquel Welch? Yes. Or, okay. 10 million BC one? or whatever. Okay, I have yeah. to pick that one now. Thanks! Yeah. I'm going to, like, be editing this shit, and I'm going to get halfway through it and be like, yeah, fucking Raquel Welch. Raquel Welch three. walking without her hands on Seinfeld. That, I'm just going to have a picture of me going, huh? And then I'm going to go be like, what? Yeah. That's even so, bad. That's... <laughs> okay, so apparently, all sorts of these people in Hawaii now are painting their roofs blue. So apparently they're running like, out of blue like paint. Back, like backpacks. Yep. So apparently, if you have a metal roof or whatever, like these people are legit painting their roofs blue because there's a fucking like conspiracy out there that... The, the Jewish space laser that no one can see uh, apparently uh, is blue. And if you paint your roof blue, then it's impervious to the destruction of the blue laser because that's science and that makes sense. You know what I would do? And I'm going to put up a picture of Neil deGrasse Tyson going... <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> like legit, dude, there's a, they're <laughs> running out of blue paint because this is so pop. If you're like, God, paint my roof blue. You the blue what, laser don't get it. You know, I, you know what I would do? You know what I would paint my roof? Blue. <laughs> just be like, I, mean, I gotta fit in, man. Well, just in case. And so Maybe like, the right, what if every conspiracy <laughs> theory in the world was right? I don't think that's possible because some of them are conflictory and Cl- conflictory? She just made my brain explode, man. Thank you for that. But anyway, but okay, so I'm, I'm digging into this conspiracy. Okay. And this one guy goes, uh, wrong. And he shows this fucking picture of this white house with a red roof that it's also a part of the conspiracy. They're like, why did that guy's house not get burned down? Why does he know? He doesn't have a red or blue roof. Let's pull him out of and his house like, and beat him. It's like something like the dude's house is made out of concrete and the roof is like metal. I'm really and I was like, oh, okay, so that makes him. That makes sense. They're like, but what about the cars where the glass melted? I guess they didn't have a blue car. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense. Blue roof conspiracy. Oh my god. Is, look at the images, dude. <laughs> oh my god. So that's the video that I have on my TikTok. 
Okay. He's like, not today, Biden. Bad things happening if you don't paint your root blue. Bigly, duck lips, bigly. Yeah, so like, oh my lord, man. <laughs> Look at this is another one. It's like, look, all the houses are burnt down. The one with the blue roof. Yeah, that's because that's find not out in Photoshop. That's not Photoshop. Yeah, at all. But hello, that looks about as real as the fucking India moon landing. <laughs> Tied it all together. Tied it all together. So, that's what we do here. You're welcome. Yes, and folks. That's going to have to wrap it up for this first episode. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And make sure you do these three things again. And I'm going to have a hell of a time trying to put those fucking pictures where I pointed. And uh, while he's bringing up the song that we're supposed to exit out to, which I believe is 67 Patriot song. Okay. Um, is the traditional song that we exit out to. I actually had an idea for um, some of the other episodes that we exit out. Um, I want to get some of our homies like... Uh, Slamero and uh, Tapes 1 2, and some of our other friends that are on Spotify and SoundCloud, and uh, show their music some love. Yes. So, and with that being said, folks, stay kind to each other, be good to each other, keep it strange, y'all. Yo, Tom Studios. <laughs>